Hello and welcome to My Guide to IL. My Guide is designed to help you decide what is best and to try and show you how to get the most out of every ship. Today I am talking about dealing damage and it might seem kind of simple but I'm going to need to make multiple videos to show you how to get the most out of every ship and how to do the most amount of damage possible. Uh, but in today's video we're going to talk about the damage types and the types of weapons, how armour and shields work, as well as uh, comparing alpha damage to cooldown uh, uh, to try and utilise big, bigger weapons and smaller weapons appropriately. So let's get into it. First up we have weapon and damage types. There are two types of damage in IL, and these are energy damage and projectile damage, or some people call it kinetic damage. These come from various types of weapons, which I will show you in a minute. Um, but it pretty much just determines uh, how powerful your weapon is, sort of, at the current state. Uh, projectile weapons are significantly easier to stop than energy weapons, and tend to be less accurate 90% of the time as well. Um, and so let's take you through some examples. So starting with energy weapons and the classic Taurus, uh, my personal favourite destroyer. Um, energy weapons, there's three types of energy weapons, and these are pulse weapons, ion weapons, and plasma weapons. Uh, the Taurus has pulse weapons, these tend to be the most accurate, um, probably of all the damage types, or weapon types rather, uh, and it's just a solid beam of energy, uh, pretty much, just an instantaneous energy cannon, sort of. Uh, next up we have ion weapons, and these are in the IO. Um, the ion weapons shoot a continuous beam of energy uh, that last for a while as we can see here on the IO it lasts for eight seconds and it does damage multiple times. Um, they also tend to have a uh, pretty high alpha damage which we'll elaborate on la uh, later but it's pretty much just the the damage that it does that's usually quite high 648 mine's upgraded slightly but yeah um, also same with the Eternal Storm, and I believe the Constantine the Great also has um, an Ion weapon too. Big and Ion, 1200 damage. So yeah, Ion weapons are pretty much the, the big one. Um, and last of all, well, actually second last, there's four types. Um, second last of all is Plasma. I haven't fully unlocked the Konamera Chaos. Konamara Chaos, sorry. Um, but these aren't as common. There's only a few things that have them. And it's pretty much just a big blob of hurt, really. Um, and it just makes things melt. Um, very commonly used on uh, Vitus B-O-10s. Um, these are famous for their heavy damage on their weapon systems. Plasma weapons tend to be a little bit slower, have longer cooldown, but they are pretty much just, yeah, they do a lot of damage. And before I forget that these do actually exist like I did earlier, um, there's a fourth type of energy weapon, which is very, very rare, and there's very few things in the game that actually have it. Um, the Raliant being the uh, most notable, um, I'm pretty sure the Constantine the Great has a module uh, for energy torpedoes and maybe some of the other, ba other battle cruisers too. But these are pretty much the best of both worlds. You get the energy uh, stuff from energy weapons, uh, which we'll talk about how that interacts with shields and other defences later. But then you also get the torpedoes, which are indirect fire, so you skip all the pesky front row stuff and shoot what actually matters. Uh, so yeah, energy torpedoes. Now back to the stuff that everyone's familiar with. Uh, projectile weapons. These are, generally speaking, more common. Uh, some fleets tend to skew more towards energy weapons because they're harder to resist. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, projectile weapons are far more common. Um, projectile weapons involve cannons, missiles, torpedoes, and rail guns. I don't think I've missed any there. Um, but yeah, uh, Winged Hussar has cannons, um, and we've got missiles, missile, missiles and torpedoes are indirect fire, I talk about that in my targeting video, which I'll put in the description. Um, cannons are pretty generic, um, their hit rate varies, but generally is pretty average. Missiles and torpedoes are fairly similar, they are indirect fire. Their accuracy can be wonky, um, especially with uh, defensive upgrades on ships that can make missiles pretty difficult to hit. Um, a lot of evasive style ships have upgrades that reduce the uh, hit rate of missiles and torpedoes that are shooting it. But altogether they are pretty powerful. And then we have rail guns, um, like the Konamara Chaos or ST-59. Rail guns are big giant cannons that hurt, but have a hard time hitting most of the time anyway. So yeah, they're like giant oversized cannons. Um, yeah, high alpha damage, slow, um, sort of like the plasma for energy weapons. Uh, yeah, they're just projectiles. So as I've hinted very strongly already, Energy weapons tend to be significantly harder to resist. If we look at the armor systems of m pretty much every ship in the game, they have significantly more armor than energy shields. Um, and we could also notice that armor is a set value, whereas energy shield is a percentage. So that does mean that energy shields become more efficient with the bigger the weapon, um, but usually that percentage is quite low anyway. Um, yeah, pretty much every ship has significantly lower energy shields than armor, although some ships you can get the energy shield up nice and high. Um, here's an example of making missiles and torpedoes harder to hit, like I mentioned just before. Um, but yeah, so energy shields is pretty much the value of, well, a percentage that cuts off uh, the energy weapon that's hitting it, pretty much. So, like, Eternal Storm base has 10% energy shield, so if you're shooting it with a weapon that does an energy weapon, like another, uh, another Eternal Storm that's dealing 1200 damage to it, it's going to take 10% of that off and take the rest. Um, but most ships have like 2% energy shield, particularly ones that you can't upgrade it. Bigger ships have uh, a little bit more, but not much at all. Um, yeah, 10 to 15% for most of the bigger ships, and everything else tends to have like 2% to none, um, and tanky sort of ships can have a little bit more. As we saw on the IO, that wasn't quite maxed out, but still had 26%. I believe it can get to 30%. So it's going to take a third off all energy weapons. Um, so yeah, that's how energy shields work. You generally want to field as many energy weapons as possible, or as much energy shield as you can, um, because it's significantly harder to come by. Armor, pretty much every ship in the game has armor, except for like, fighters, and I think corvettes had it removed from them, but fighters and corvettes are pretty much the only things that don't really have an armor. Oh, corvettes do have armor, um, but most fighters don't have armor. Um, although some like the, the Vitus AO-21 uh, do have a little bit of armor. That's not armor. That's armor. Three armor. So armor is significantly more common and it's in much higher quant uh, quantities. Um, Taurus, I haven't upgraded its armor surprisingly, even though it's a front row. Um, 20 armor versus 2% energy shield. And it can go up significantly higher than that. Um, so yeah, uh, 
armor actually works by just reducing that value straight off any weapon that shoots it, any projectile weapon. So if you've got 20 armor and you're shooting it with a weapon that does 25 damage, you, it's only going to take 5. But there is a cap on this, which is uh, a weapon will always do 10%. So if you've got 50 armor, even if you're shooting it with a weapon that only does 15 damage, you're still going to get 1.5 damage through every single time, uh, which is usually absolutely nothing. Well, not usually, it is absolutely nothing. Um, but yeah, some ships can end up getting uh, pretty high armor. Um, cruisers and above can often have 100 plus armor easy. Um... So, yeah, that makes projectile weapons significantly harder to put their damage through. And what makes abilities such as the uh, winged hussars, crits, and uh, physical armor penetration abilities on things like missiles are very useful. So now with that in mind, we want to try and figure out how much damage we're actually going to be doing because if you look at battle reports your ships are never doing the same amount of damage as they say on paper like Taurus never does 16,708 damage per minute in the battle it just doesn't happen uh, once you take into account like uh, missing and evasion and the enemy shields and armor all that kind of stuff it really puts a big hole in the amount of damage you do um, so with that, you kind of want to determine, uh, within your fleet, and I'm going to make a video on, uh, fleet composition, uh, hopefully today at the same time as this video, um, uh, this one will be released first either way. Um, you're going to want to figure out, uh, the actual damage of your weapon, like the Taurus has this big experimental pulse cannon thingy. Uh, pulse turret which does 500 damage at base um, and it's been upgraded uh, various times it's got energy things which upgrade its damage so yeah this is going to uh, cut through energy shields but then all energy weapons will cut through the shield fairly similarly whether it's a 20 damage weapon taking 2% off to become 18 or a 500 damage weapon taking 2% off to become like 480 or whatever it will be um yeah no it won't be 480 i'm not even going to do the maths anyway uh yeah this is more of an issue when it comes to um projectile weapons as projectile weapons get stumped a lot easier by defenses um so like the the winged hussar its missiles doing nearly 6,000 damage per minute at only 168, this is upgraded at base, it's not that much, um, I think it's 140 at base, um, so you have to take into account whether you want more shots doing less damage, um, and this is when your fleet composition comes into play, and trying to figure out what your enemy is using, if they're using lighter armor things, then you might want to go for stuff like this, because you can get more damage stacked up, but if they're using heavy armor, then you might want to focus more on its cannon, which has got like 400 damage at base. Or you might want to not use this sort of ship and go field something with heavier damage like the IO, which is just a genuinely great ship, um, but has got much higher alpha damage to help punch through armor and hit points a bit better. Um, so yeah, if you're versing like a bunch of destroyers and frigates, the likelihood is you're not going to want one massive shot to decimate it and then not fire for the next 20-30 seconds. You're probably going to want a weapon that does a little bit less damage per hit but fires more readily, uh, probably like the Winged Hussar or a lot of the other um, weapons uh, on destroyers and frigates. Um, yeah, you do want to take into account the differences in damage and what else you're using like if you're using a few things that have really heavy damage and this is going into fleet composition a little bit anyway if you're using things with heavier damage like the ios or something like that 
but you know that you're not just going to come across big ships like cruisers and battle cruisers and yes destroyer frigate fleets can handle those sort of fleets until a certain point um but yeah it's just good thing to keep in mind what sort of weapons you're fielding and for what purpose because every weapon has a purpose whether it's the OP Seller Defender with its 420 damage missiles uh, that is upgraded or the CVT-800 which also has a pretty hefty amount of damage um, or whatever it's yeah you need to figure out what damage or what weapons are for what purpose and trying to either balance or skew your fleet for uh, certain purposes. Uh, so yeah, that's damage. Um, that's probably everything to do with it. I'm going to release um, a video talking about tanking, avoiding damage, all that kind of stuff, which will have a fair bit of overlapping information with this video, um, as well as a fleet uh, composition video, which I've already started to talk about composition naturally anyway. Um, but yeah. I will be releasing those hopefully within the next day or two after releasing this video. Uh, please check out my other ones. I also make music. There's a few songs already out. Um, all instrumental. A few more coming out in the following weeks as I go back to school next week, sadly. Um, which will put a hold on IL videos for a little bit. Um, but that should not be too much of an issue i'll still be making music and posting whenever it's ready to come out so yeah i hope you enjoyed please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time